Hello, and welcome to the second in the KDE challenge uh, for the fall 2021, where I want to take a look at different versions of Linux distros that come with KDE as the default and kind of see where they stack up. Last time, I looked at Fedora Kinoite, which is an RPM OS tree, silver blue like um, Fedora distro with KDE as the default. This time I'm looking at the latest Kubuntu, Kubuntu 2110. It just came out this month. And I wanna take a look at what their defaults are and what it looks like with Kubuntu. Um, as I did last time, I'll be pausing the recording here and there because I don't believe you need to watch um, the installation process necessarily. I mean, you might, I, I might show you as I click around but not the part where it's, what the heck is this? <laughs> it's like satanic Kubuntu or something. Uh, that's weird. Somehow, I guess it thinks my image is flipped. I hope it doesn't stay that way because that'll be, um, that'll be tough. <laughs> All right. <coughs> so, uh, unlike the uh, Kinoite, um, Install. I think this one's a live. Starts off as a live CD, uh, which uh, Ubuntu was. Uh, shoot, I forgot what distro they were building off of. There was a, a Debian one that people used to use back when live CDs were a thing. Um, but they were. I think they were one of the first um, distros to. Um, all right, let's go to install to let you try before you install, which is pretty nice, especially if you're distro hopping or viewing or whatever. <coughs> so it says it didn't take too long. All right, we'll do that. Yep. Um, so what's my history with Ubuntu? Uh, I am, let's see. Well, yeah, we'll do normal. Um, down yet, that's fine. Sure. So uh, I've, I've been a big Fedora person since uh, 2003 when I wanted to check out Linux and I went to the store and there was a book that had uh, Linux, uh, had Fedora and some disks and one that had Debian and some disks and I happened to pick the Fedora one and that sent me down my path. Uh, that said, I've played around with Ubuntu quite a bit um, on various laptops. I usually use my laptops as ways to um, distro hop or check out different distros without um, without having to mess with my default installation. And so, you know, yeah, that's fine. So, um, yeah, I've played around with it here and there. All right, well, let's see, let's just do Oh, my computer's name. Hmm. All right, since I'm, I don't plan to keep this, we'll just do test user and test. Nice, easy password. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And we'll just do an automatic login. All right, so, um, for a while, uh, my wife was on uh, Kubuntu uh, back around the time of Windows 8. She didn't want to. She was one of those people that, you know, a lot of people said that Windows 8 would bring people to Linux. Um, she's one of those people for which it was actually true. It did bring her to Linux because she just didn't want, like that UI and she wasn't having anything to do with it. Uh, additionally, at the time that I created that for her, um, Fedora hadn't yet um, come up with their ability to upgrade in place. There were ways to do it, but it wasn't supported, and I didn't want her computer to randomly break. And so um, we we did, and she ran that for a long time until I want to say about a year ago. Um, her computer started dying. So I got her a new motherboard and stuff. This is right before COVID and all the shortages. 
uh, or maybe it was in the middle of COVID, but it was before the shortages. I can't remember exactly when, but uh, unfortunately, with the new motherboard, it kept um, crashing for her uh, with Ubuntu. And the same thing happened with CentOS, but with Fedora, everything was fine. So now she's on Fedora as well. So in this house, out of all the computers and laptops and whatnot that we have, it is uh, essentially me, my daughter, which runs uh, her laptop, which runs Pop OS because we bought it from um, System76. And I just believe in going with the vendor's OS, it'll be the best supported. And um, so she uses that one. Uh, we just left it with the default um, Pop OS on there, which is a GNOME based distro. And she's gotten used to it, and she's fine with it. Everything else runs Fedora, uh, and except for the HTPC, which is running Silverblue, they all run uh, some kind of KDE um, top. So that's where I'm at with Ubuntu. Um, I certainly have no issues with an Ubuntu way of doing things. And so I'll be curious to see where it goes. So um, last time in Kinoite, uh, it turned out that there were not really many uh, applications installed by default. There was essentially uh, Dolphin and Firefox, and that's about it. Um, everything else you had to packs, and you had to first um, you had to first uh, turn on. Um, Flathub. Without that, there weren't any real KDE applications to find. Uh, I did end up around turning on 3D acceleration, which means we'll stay in the um, Vert Manager um, UI instead of going to Remote Viewer, because if you turn on the 3D acceleration, you can't have an address that you connect to. Uh, the only the only thing you lose is the ability to have more than one desktop, but for the purposes of this video, that would just make things more annoying if I had more than one desktop. Alright, looks like the installation is just about finished. I like this um, slideshow type thing. They've been doing it forever. Fedora's gone back and forth on it, but I like it because it, it prepares the user uh, for what's in there. Uh, especially since a lot of the times you're going to be um, installing Linux by yourself, it's not going to come already with a computer like Windows or, or uh, Mac OS X would. Alright, at this point I'm going to pause and we'll come back after this part is done. Alright, it's finally done, it's time to restart the computer. It took a good chunk of time. Good thing I paused for this video, it would just be you guys staring at it, or I'd have to sit here and fast forward the video and that's kind of pointless. Alright, since there's no login, just come straight into KDE. Get our plasma login, or our um, little banner thing that shows up when you first start it. Alright, and there we go. Fades in. Um, anything that goes a little slowly, just blame that on my computer. The fact that it is um, a VM, and I've also got a couple other things running in the background that I tried to stop but didn't actually want to stop. So. All right, so this thing says we have updates. So it's interesting, in Fedora, at least in the version I've got, this comes up and shows something here rather than launching Discover. While that fetches updates, I'm just gonna put it down here. Let's take a look at our menu. So we've got this little sunshine thing here. All right, I don't know what distro info data is, but that's pretty small. All right, so no transparency here. I don't know if that's a difference between the Kinoite um, defaults the version of um, of uh, KDE Plasma or what? And it, it's not the end of the world. I just thought it was neat that it was enabled um, in Kinoite. So uh, that can be updated. That shouldn't do much. <coughs> Jammy jellyfish. I guess that's what comes next. Oh, that's right. Different password than usual. All right. 
So let's take a look. So we've got some some games. Uh, generally speaking, you know, these are like games on the level of Solitaire back in the old Windows 95 days. So, but it's, you know, they're there. All right, so graphics. We've got LibreOffice Draw. We've got a scan software. So interestingly, no Krita, which is kind of like a um, Photoshop, but focused on drawing rather than pictures and stuff like that. All right, for internet, a pretty good amount of stuff here. We've got the uh, web browser conversation it tells you here what it is you know rc client a torrent um so i find it interesting they went with um thunderbird and not kmail uh, uh browsers you know kitty doesn't really have a standard browser not anymore i don't think anyone really uses conquer but uh, i'm very surprised that they did that um so there's no pinning here which is in the latest um, anniversary edition. We'll see if that's in neon. Uh, so we got LibreOffice. I guess that's the new icon. Uh, and it looks like it, it started in dark mode rather than light mode, which is also an interesting choice. Um, so I also wanted to say here, Kitty Connect, I use this and I love it. Essentially, you install this on your um, cell phone and then your cell phone notifications show up on your on your computer and um, that's really cool like if i don't have my phone right in front of me and someone's texting me or whatever and you can actually reply from within kde back to the phone without having to grab the phone and i love using a keyboard rather than you know the predictive text or whatever it's called nowadays so that's really cool um all right multimedia we've got eliza um I like the concept of Eliza as a music player. Um, I tend to use Cantata myself because Eliza does not support scrobbling to last FM. And I know you might be saying, scrobbling to last FM, how 2006? But I really like doing it. I like the data it gives me. I like seeing at the end of the year what I listen to. I usually end up getting pretty surprised. We've got Pulse Audio and VLC, and uh, they're probably gonna eventually move to Pipewire. Um, Fedora's or Red Hat's thing that you know people usually end up at the, with the Red Hat solution eventually. All right, got something. Uh, Kinoita didn't. I'm still in, uh, surprised they didn't do Caligra, which is the KDE suite. And then, oh, they've got a Wacom tablet finder. That's pretty cool. All right, so we've got the Muon package manager, which is apparently different than Discover. And some utilities here. All right, emoji selector. We might have had that too. I don't remember. I wasn't really looking at those type of things. Interesting. All right. Cool enough. So different. In this, oh, and I saw they had Kate there, which is uh, great. A great when you don't need a whole IDE for programming. So it's going to load what it's got here. All right, so more or less looks the same as it did in Fedora. You've got your descriptions, um, some pictures. Huh, interesting. Oh. I thought it was going to ask me if I wanted a snap or a deb. I don't know what they do by default on Kubuntu. I know Ubuntu has um, let you pick whether it's a snap or or a deb. All right, and then here we've got. Let's see. All right, we've got the different categories. Oh, what is this cool retro terminal? What is this? <laughs> Let me. I, I just. I just have to check this out. This seems really interesting. And maybe I'll install it on my main computer just for fun. Um, computing for a very long time, so it might actually remind me of my childhood. I like these uh, reviews here.
do, 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 do. Remember, this is going slowly is my fault. Then Kuban, my computer is chugging like crazy. The fan is going nuts. Did it launch? Doesn't look like it did. Let's see. Probably under utilities? No. Uh, let's see. Cool. Sometimes these. There we go. Whoa! Oh man, it's got the scan lines and everything. Look at that. Amazing. And it like fades to the corner back here. Wow. This is. <laughs> it has the goating. Oh man, this is. So this would uh, probably. Uh, this is probably something that would get old really quickly, but that's so funny. <laughs> it really reminds me of when I was first using my Tandy and all those type of computers. And they got a pretty. Pretty decently specced out set of applications here. Play it slowly. This is oh, I was gonna say this has got to be a very neat. All right, cool. Tilex. We don't need that because console does its own. Um, its own tiling automatically. Oh, they don't have it here by default. So I guess that's a Fedora thing. But, uh, let's see. I think it's... Huh, interesting. So they've... Seems like they're a bit behind on the version of KDE compared to what I've got on Fedora. And this just came out. Let's see. Um... Go to game for center. All right, this is plasma five point two two. All right, let me pause this while I check what's going on with my computer. So here's my computer. Here's the VM. And apparently, same version of Plasma, a newer version of Frameworks, same Qt version, and yet, let me show you what my console looks like, because I think this is awesome. We've got these buttons up here, so I can just say, hey, give me a two by two. Hey, give me a two by one. Give me another two by one. So, I think that's interesting that uh, the, KDE, the Kubuntu version doesn't have that. I'll be curious to see what KDE Neon does. Now, I will say I do like um, Kubuntu's default background better. Um, and I think KDE's had this background for a while, but uh, first impressions matter, and that I just still can't get over the Kinoite background. That background was atrocious. Apologies to whoever made it and whoever chose it, but god dang, was it crazy. Just taking a look at what they've got here by default. If I was going with these rather than like my own pictures, the autumn one looks really cool. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, man, I gotta steal this from my desktop. This is great. I would definitely have this, especially right now. Uh, I've done Blue Curl before. I like that one. Um, I like Conky. I, I wouldn't mind doing this one. I, I've done Ice Cold before on some of my backgrounds. Um, ooh, safe landing. What's this? Well, that's cool. I like that one, too. And, uh... Volan is interesting. I think uh, their new their 
anniversary edition is probably a riff on this one because it's got like some floating ice or something. Well, that's pretty neat. I think I'm just gonna leave it on this for now. So this has been Kubuntu. All right, so, so far we looked at Fedora's Kinoite, their RPM OS tree version. It was okay. Um, again, you know, it's definitely gonna be for a more advanced user because not very many uh, programs installed by default. Uh, Kubuntu, by, uh, an ex um, by contrast, a much better installation for something you can put on a person's computer and just walk away and they've got the programs they need to be productive. Uh, that's assuming people aren't just doing everything on the web nowadays, like in Google Docs and so forth. Nice theme. Actually, let me just take a quick look and see if they have the 25th anniversary theme. And the reason why I'm not trying to run an update is it came up and said there was an update, so I didn't... Well, maybe that's not fair, because I did do something similar. Kinoite seemed to not think there was a need for an update. Let me do a quick little check here. Um, see what happens when I run this. So gonna, oh yes, I was going to look at the um, settings. Um, so probably under settings. Well, all packages are up to date, so really no excuses here. Nothing I did wrong. All right, so it looks like we're not actually in the dark theme. It just they have a dark panel, so let's go to the dark theme. Welcome, dark side. Not it seems to. There we go. Just taking its sweet time because. Um, again, it's running a VM. All right, let's just take a quick look at appearance, see what they've got here for themes. And if they have that uh, highlighting thing that's part of the 25th anniversary edition. So they've got Breeze Dark, Breeze Twilight. Ooh, what is Twilight? And there's Kubuntu. So right now it's in Breeze Dark, not Kubuntu, which is interesting. Let's go to colors really quickly. Yeah, so it doesn't look like they've got the Anniversary Edition. I mean, it just came out this week, but I guess it's not done with the repos yet. Let's see what Twilight looks like. Twilight. Twilight might be where we started. Yeah, I think it started on Twilight. If we do Kubuntu. Um, not much that I can notice. And then let's go back to Breeze Dark. Okay. Splash screen. That's the word I was thinking of before. It was a splash screen. All right. So that's that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that um, Neon's going to have the 25th anniversary edition or we're going to update to it, but we'll see. That's going to be the next one and the final one for our KDE challenge um, for this um, fall uh, 2021 edition. And I thank you for watching this and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.